Welcome back, everyone, to episode 20 of the Rally Report podcast. Today is going to be a different episode from what I usually do, but I believe it is immensely important I cover it and give a platform to voices like Nadia to spread awareness as this war is far from over and ways we can help with it. So I'm beyond grateful that Nadia here has agreed to join me in doing this. She's a phenomenal squash player and is a seven-time national champion at the age of 22, but beyond that, she's a proud Ukrainian. Welcome, Nadia Osenko. How are you? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so to start this off, I just wanted to quickly, you know, rewind the clock to a couple of weeks ago. But if you could recall back to the day the war broke out, how did it feel for you? How you felt being far away from your family? And what were the emotions like? So everything started uh, on Thursday for Ukrainian time. It was still Wednesday night in the US where I was in Hartford, Connecticut. And I remember it was 11 p.m. Uh, I received this news that they were bombing my native city, Kiev, and other places in Ukraine. And I walked off my room from the dormitory. And another girl is my neighbor. She's from Belarus. Mm -hmm. She also opens the door at the same moment. And I start to cry and, she, yeah. and she's hugging me. So that was very, I couldn't believe like anyone else uh, that it's happening. And uh, she, she really helped me to fall asleep that night because the next day was the travel day to nationals yeah. for college squash. It was, I thought the, the worst time yet. Uh, it was actually a good uh, moment for me to be in because the nationals helped me to concentrate on something else. Mm -hmm. uh, being with the team, uh, it was incredibly hard because even at the nationals, it was hard for me to concentrate, fall asleep again. I was constantly watching news. I was constantly on the phone with my parents because they, they didn't know where to go. They live in Kiev, so they thought they had to go uh, to different cities. Uh, now they're in the western part of Ukraine, but everything was happening. Like the Thursday specifically was super long day it felt like forever mm -hmm. after like everything started and were you in contact with your parents from the moment it started out were you able to get a hold of them yes uh they because it was 11 p.m in the u.s and it was 5 a.m in ukraine i instantly messaged them and they said yeah we woke up we heard explosions uh Obviously, I was very worried because my parents on the other side tried to calm yeah. me down, <laughs> saying, like, we're okay, we're fine. Uh, and they moved to, the, I think they stayed in Kiev for one more day, and the next day they packed and moved mm -hmm. to, like, a uh, suburb of Kiev, where right now is very hard uh, situation. But after that, in a few weeks, they moved to another city. And they're safe right now. They're a lot more safer. Right now, yeah. yes, yes. I mean, when they moved to that city, the next day they started to bomb it. So I was like, but it was it happened like a few times. And of course, they were they're waking up every time at five a.m. Yeah. from the um, air alarm. It's happening every day. I cannot imagine how hard it for them if it's so hard for me mm. being here, like miles away from being safe. Yeah. Right. And do you, do you have any siblings, Nadia? I have older brother, yeah. yes, and at first, my, and he lives in the suburb of Kiev, and that that was the first place where my parents moved, and then they moved together to the so western the, okay. part of the. So the, all your family members are together now. Okay. Yeah. Was was it tough for you being that you were in Hartford and obviously competing in the nationals, just being so far away from them? Was that was that the toughest part? Would you say for you? I would say yes, and uh, they were not. A lot of Ukrainians, let's say in my university, mm. there's only three of us, I would say. Uh, and uh, I wanted to be in a, I wanted to support them. I wanted to support other Ukrainians who were running away from the country. When I was looking on Instagram, let's say, I saw so many of my friends like moving to other countries, coming to Poland, coming to whatever places they can reach. Uh, like their city has been destroyed and... Uh, sometimes not hearing from some of our friends for several days and like, where are they? Are they fine? Yeah. So, yes. So I wanted to ask you, wh where is your headspace now? Like at this very moment, you know, it's been a, 
the war started at the end of February. Now we are in April. Are you feeling a lot? Just, yeah, run us through your emotions right now. Uh, if before it was more uh, of being on edge, like constantly worried and excited, right now it's more about anger mm. of all the situation. But also this anger gives like uh, this uh, base to stay concentrated, focus, and do whatever is in my power to do right now, to talk... Uh, to help some organizations, for example, I was translating in English their messages for free to help spread information, asking other uh, contacts in the U.S. to help some of the friends if they needed the help. Mm -hmm. So more focused. And uh, yes, it's it sounds bad, but psychology psychologically, people are getting used to things, yeah. even to such terrible things like this. Right. This is why it's also very important to remind. Everyone, it's still happening. It's not it's over, yeah. And we still need to, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I know. I get what you're saying. I feel that, I mean, right now in the U.S., like the media coverage is not as big as it was a couple weeks back, and it's not like the war is over. Um, but I want to ask you, Nadia, what does it mean to you to be Ukrainian? I never thought of it before mm -hmm. because obviously I was very happy, proud, honored to represent my country, to wear blue and yellow, yeah. um, my uniform. And it was uh, super exciting for me when at the European tournaments, I would hear, I would see my flag. I would, be like, I would bring my flag to the prize ceremony and I would hear Ukrainian national anthem. So it was always, and I was very uh, proud to also talk about Ukraine. So people would ask me, <laughs> I remember like 10 years ago when I was playing at tournaments, where are you from? I was like, oh, from Ukraine. Oh, they didn't know where it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, they were not sure that it was in Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so you, when did you decide to, did you, was it always in the plan for you to move to the States for education? No, uh, I was very determined to stay yeah. in Ukraine. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to stay there. Yeah. I love the, my country and my city. Uh, and uh, at age of 15, uh, I visited the U.S. for the first time for the PSA tournament. Mm -hmm. And it happened to be at uh, Virginia University. Oh, wow. Okay. UVA. So, so that's how I found out about college mm -hmm. squash. And that's, oh, you have squash league among students. What? <laughs> and you can study and play squash. Wow. <laughs> and that's when I started to explore this. Mm -hmm more and you're like you're you've been enjoying trinity it's been a good experience yes okay. and do you do you feel like you got enough support from your team and the school during the time team was incredible yeah. yes absolutely everyone reached out to me the same day when it happened in the night on the next morning they were there for me and again as i said if it was not for nationals and we were not together that uh, for the team if let's say season was over i think i would have felt much worse mm, yeah uh, when the war bro uh, started and, uh, and coaches yeah. uh, extra like thanks to coaches and other stuff athletic department like trainers as well they supported me a lot that's awesome and i think the one question i had for you was as a ukrainian you know people like us weren't aware of the conflicts between russia and ukraine were you were you always on edge about the conflicts or did you see this war happening beforehand no, and my parents as well were not, we did not think that it would happen. And especially we were, we couldn't imagine that Russian Federation would also attack from not just Russian borders, from, from Belarus border, borders as well. Mm -hmm. We uh, we didn't think of that, of that. I, being in the U.S., I asked more questions about, oh, is it actually happening? Then in Ukraine, everyone's trying to come up, which I can understand right. because people should be calm about it and not freak out too soon. But no, we did not expect this to happen. Wow. And how are you, how are you feeling about now, like, how Ukraine is fighting back? Right? Are you, if you, how proud are you? I'm very yeah. proud. Uh, yeah, I am extremely proud. I heard from some of the Ukrainians that they have never been as proud as they are right now. <laughs> yeah. 
for everything, like everyone, like not just armed forces, but uh, ordinary citizens, uh, all uh, people from uh, human rights activists, for even like local shops that's providing food, volunteering, everyone's gathering together, helping people to move, uh, posting them for free, not asking for anything, just to help. Yeah, yeah. and uh, as well, like. So, Poland is doing an amazing job in, in that terms because more than three and a half million of Ukrainians are there right wow. now. And it's extremely hard for country to get that many people mm-hmm. <laughs> for in, in several weeks. And uh, they're letting our kids into schools and very, very supportive. Yeah. And is there any stories you want to share that has happened that you might want people to hear about? Obviously, you don't have to say anything about that, but... Stories. Definitely, I would like to share uh, information about one organization, which is the Squash Players Association of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And my parents are part of this uh, organization. It's very young. We just started this January. (laughs) But now we changed our priorities, and this organization helps uh, with humanitarian aid and specifically uh, squash players in Ukraine to get evacuated, to find places to stay, to... Uh, help with medicine and and clothes, food. So we are working, and I was translating for them as well, a lot of messages, and and asking people to, like, uh, spread the word about this organization. Mm -hmm. And how do you think the squash community, or the CSA, and you're part of the PSA, can better support Ukraine right now? Well, definitely, you have to talk about yeah. it. It's not like you have said it once, this is enough. Fortunately, no, it's not how it works. Uh, and uh, the more people hear about it, the more we can find some other people with connections who can help. They uh, Also, with <laughs> donating, this is another part, mm-hmm. like with all what you can and ask your friends. I know many people... Uh, People reach out to me within the European squash community. Uh, they said, like, if you need to, like, go and stay in my house, from uh, we can practice together. We can share room with wow. you. Uh, so this is amazing. We have, let's say, two, a lot of juniors as well. They're separated with their families. Mm-hmm. They're like in another country without their, yeah. like, most of them, like, fathers, and they. Uh, <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. No, this must must be tough. Um, Yeah, I guess you kind of did answer it, but I I know we talked about it before, but obviously this isn't a question, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a moment to say anything, anything you want to, whether it be to the people of Ukraine or the world or anyone who listens to this. Is there anything you want to say? Um. So, yes, as, as I mentioned about this organization, Squash Player Association of Ukraine, any help would be amazing. Or if you have any contacts to share with us as well, it would be highly appreciated. And uh, Ukraine will stand and Ukraine will win. Yeah, thank you. Um, I will obviously link all the relevant links below. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me. And I'll do my best to direct you to the right qu- direction. And obviously, we'll message Nadia if I don't have the answers to it. But to wrap this up, I kind of want to say something as well. You know, in many ways, it's unfathomable that we are witnessing a war at this scale in the world we live in today. And I hope I'm echoing what a lot of people are thinking about this war is that the people of Ukraine have so courageously and fiercely fought back. You know, that never give up attitude right now, I think is really contagious. And I hope we can continue to support and better our support from not only the squash community, but elsewhere as well. And just another big, big thank you to Nadia for doing this. This must have been so tough, but thank you for sharing your story.